how a person behaves is this part that many times might take you six months, three months, nine months to really see about that person. But the DISC report will show you this within a matter of minutes. And the great thing about this report is it's not just something you have a person take and say, gee whiz, isn't that interesting to stick it in the drawer. It is something that the report is, it can be used as a development tool for a coaching plan. And it's designed to be shared with the people that are working or living closely with the person the report was taking, taken on. Does that, does that make sense? Because what happens many times if you do a workshop, and you go in, and everybody's just all buzzed up about taking the report, and they're just, I mean, I'm telling you, this, it's like when you have people take these assessments, it's like crack. I mean, everybody's addicted, and they are sharing, they, well, hopefully, if, you know, except for you get a report like my profile, you don't want anybody to see it, but everybody else is is excited about the report. And you don't want to come in and do an intervention or do a workshop, and then they forget about it and forget about you 20 days after the workshops close, you need to design a development plan where they continuously use that report to improve communication and understanding throughout their organization. Now, let's talk about the four behavioral styles. And I have four uh, personalities, famous personalities that I placed on here to help you get an understanding of what the four styles are. Who knows what this guy's name is? Simon Cowell, right? You know, from, um, what, right. What, what's the name of that program? Sorry, I was on mute, yes. <laughs> you can unmute yourself at this point. <laughs> yes. Uh, American Idol. American Idol. Thank you for the reason I can't remember the name of the show. Maybe it's because of him. Uh, I, I, I suppress his name every time. Now, Simon Cowell is what we call a stereotypical high high D, and he's probably like a hundred percent. And I'm exaggerating here because I'm trying to get you to grasp the concept of what each of these four styles represent. High D, their focus is uh, solving problems. Uh, and 18% of the population uh, has some high D above the line, above the energy line, and I'll explain what that means. So high Ds is dominance. They like to be char in charge. They're more directive in nature. They're uh, in some cases, depending how high their eye is, could be a, a dictator in some cases. They are not necessarily extroverts. Uh, they can be introverts. Now, the high eyes like Oprah. Oprah Winfrey, we were all so sad when she left her show recently. And, and high eyes, they, they influence people through their friendliness and the ability to motivate others. And their strength is their people skills, their relationships, they love to talk. I'm talking, I'm exaggerating here, 100% high I is a person similar to that. And 28% of the population are high eyes. You know, I, I'm jealous of high eyes because everybody is a friend, I, and, they, and they feel so trusting. Karen, is that true about you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then we have the S's. S stands for steadiness. Uh, and 40% of the population uh, are high S's. And thank the Lord for S's because they're the ones who stick to the details and get the job done. And S can stand for service to others. It could stand for um, uh, uh, you know, strength in, in teamwork. And, you know, it's sort of like Mr. Rogers. I mean, he, he always, you know, you always feel comfortable with Mr. Rogers and how close, you know, the family is and how people are. These are the people who hold the whole thing together. The D's, depending on how I like to make 
rules and break rules and start new things. The eyes, the eyes build the relationships and make people feel good and are sensitive to people's feelings. And the S's, they have to, you know, they're the ones that tie everything together. And then we have like Mr. Gates, the high C's, the compliance is analytical. Everything they see in life is black or white, right or wrong, proven or unproven, valid or invalid. And, you know, their color is blue. And we'll explain what the colors mean. But their focus and their strength is process and procedures. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you have not written down these four Ps, I guarantee you, you will see this many times uh, as we through, go through this course. And if you memorize anything, memorize these four Ps. P, the strength for D is solving problems. I's is people. Uh, P st for steadiness, for S high S's is pace. How quickly they do things, or if they're a low S, how slow they are in getting things done. And then for C's is procedures. Uh, so those are the P's. Problems, people, pace, procedures. And I guarantee you, if you remember these words and which of the four styles they go with, you will sail through this course a lot quicker. Now, let's look. If we looked at chapter four in the book, and we would see uh, this quote or these quotations. Again, D for dominance, I, how they influence people, S, their pace or consistency or steadiness in getting the job done, and C, compliance to rules and procedures and constraints. And every one of you has various intensities of all these four behavioral styles. Uh, everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. I, I had a, a client who called me up and they wanted to do 360 degree assessments on seven different managers and I just knew from talking to the, the president of the company he was a high D and, and because you know when you are a high D it's easy for me to identify other high D's and sometimes it takes a high D to manage another high D but he was frustrated and we were designing this 360 degree degree assessment because he was frustrated because some of his managers were not responding to his emails and requests quick enough. And usually with a high D, that means like within an hour. <laughs> and he was getting very frustrated. And I was trying to explain to him with this 360 that there are people who are going to be different in how they respond to people's, other people's requests and, and demands. Now, uh, and he never understood that before. He thought everybody was supposed to be like him and quickly to respond to every request and every response from every employee. And I said, we can't put that kind of question in 360. It wouldn't be valid because everybody sees things differently. Everybody has a different behavioral style. And uh, there's another way to handle it instead of nailing them a, on a, as a question in the 360-degree assessment. Let's talk about the emotions of DISC. Anybody want to guess why a D is a, has a red color? Red for anger. <laughs> Very good. Was that Karen? No, it was Diana. Oh, Diana. Thank you. Right, high D's. A high D, that is if you're, you know, pale skin like me, will show anger quickly. And usually high D's are the ones who have a flash of anger and then they're, they've forgotten about it forever. And they don't even re remember reacting to a situation. A low D is totally different. They have a slow to anger. It, it takes, they have a longer fuse to get emotional. And some high D's can be emotional people. And again, the higher the D, the uh, 
uh, the, the quicker they respond. Now, Karen, I'm going to just pop up your report, just show one, one page. If we looked at Karen's D is 63%, and at work she goes down to 23%. So that is, you know, is when we say high, usually we mean anything that's high is above the 50% line, and I would consider a high 80% or, or higher. And again, the higher the D, the more quick or more direct that person is going to be in any particular situation. So let me uh, talk about the eyes. The eyes, much more in optimistic and and sometimes very enthusiastic people, depending, again, at the intensity of the D score. So high eyes, optimistic. A low eye, on the other hand, is totally opposite. And that someone, the lower the eye, the more pessimistic a person will be. On the S's, the green is sort of like, you know, green light means go. You know, high green people are, are good at uh, relating to team members. And the higher the S, the more non-emotional the person is. The lower the S, the more emotional they're going to be. So if we look at uh, Simon Cow, do you think he, you know, being a high D, quick to react, do you think Simon, Key, Simon Cow is a low S or a high S, or a, a low S or high S? Anybody want to take a guess? High S? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I cannot disagree with that. That appears to be the way he is. Now, when we look at um, Oprah Winfrey, do you think she is a high D or low D? High, low D. Low. Mm hmm Yeah, low D. Yeah, obviously high I. Do you think she's a has a high S or low S? Low S. Low S. <laughs> what makes you think that? <laughs> it's very, uh, she's very expressive about her emotions. Yeah, and and then with C's blue, and the reason we have blue color, now, and I don't want anybody to get offended because I haven't read all of your reports, so I don't know what you are. A high a blue is because, like my CEO, PhD colleague, uh, they come across sometimes cold, and they're very difficult to warm up to initially. So sometimes when you see the blue color, that gives you a feeling of blue ice. I don't know if you've ever been to Alaska and visited icebergs, but they have that blue ice in the iceberg. Sometimes when you first meet the person, that's how you feel. And again, the high, higher the C is someone who will never break the rules. They will get permission before they ever go off course. While the rest of us in the world, including Greg Smith, we rather proceed till we're apprehended. I'd rather break the rules and get, you know, get forgiveness later. Except, you know, my wife doesn't like that. But low fear, break the rules versus high fear, get permission. Now, as we go forward, this is where a lot of people start getting confused because in the second class. I'm going to give you graphs and have you, and I'm going to give you descriptors, and you're going to have to tell me different things. And the exam is sort of the same way. But as long as you remember the four P's, and let's review. What's the P? What's the focus? The strength of a D is P for what? Solving problem. Very good. For I, what's the P? People. People. Very good. S is? People. Pace. Pace. How quick or how slow? 
And when you when we start looking at the various descriptors, when I say descriptors, I mean uh, when you look at a graph, and we'll I'm just going to pull up a generic assessment. When we talk about descriptors, these are the descriptors uh, that we're talking about, and. So if I, if I have, give you an exam question and I say this person is inspiring, magnetic, and political, wh who would she be? High, high D, I, S, or C? High I. Yeah, all you do is look at these descriptors. And I give you a question and say, all right, John is a difficult person to work with. Uh, he is pessimistic and moody and very critical of others. Is he a high DIS or C or ex low DIS or C? Low I. Low I. Okay, oh. so, yeah, you see how easy that is? Now, you will now at some point if you do as many assessments as I do, you will memorize all these words because all I ever do now is just look at the graph and I know exactly the kind of behavior this person has. That will take you time and experience. You will not have that mastered unless you have a photographic memory uh, in three classes. So this comes with time and the goal is, you know, it's an open book process. And when you're debriefing someone with the report, it's okay just to pull this page out separately and stick it next to you when you're coaching the person so that, you know, uh, makes you a little bit more comfortable. All right, so we talked about the emotions of, of the DISC assessments. Let me give you a little bit more, a few other characteristics for the various intensities uh, on, on the four behavioral styles. D can also be demanding. <laughs> I can be inspiring. S, their pace, the higher it is, they appear relaxed. Now, what was the, uh, the emotion of the high S? It was non-emotional. Do you think a high S person doesn't have emotions? They do, but it's very difficult for you to visualize or see their body language uh, appear to be emotional. So some that they appear body language wise relaxed, but the inside they could be a raging tornado and you'll never know until they get so frustrated that they'll come after you with an axe. So it's my sarcasm. Go ahead. That's it, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so you will see questions, and maybe on the exam, says, what's the emotion of the S? And the answer is, they're non-emotional, uh, you know, at least from visualizing them on the outside. C, the higher the C, the more worried they are. I mean, talking about people who are probably most prone to have a heart attack and a ulcer is a high C because they stress out over things but again they're they're also like the s is hard to to visualize that it's all on the internal while the d's and i's well we just spit out and and explode and be emotional and then we're over and done with it i'm probably the most emotional person in my family and i'm a high d so uh so anyway again and then you have the characteristics down here all right any questions that at this point, we have about 40 more minutes to go. Anybody um, want to have an emotional tirade and ask me a question? This isn't an emotional tirade, but I'll mention <laughs> a very quick anecdote, Greg. Please. I was once consulting with a company which had a, a very well liked high S working there. And I happened to be there on the day when. Uh, when she um, was showing her low S side, all this stuff that she had bottled up, I guess, and she threw a chair. <laughs> is, is, is that evidence of a low S or a high S? It's probably more typical of a low S. And we'll give you other 
uh, graphs with antidotes, and, and I can probably explain uh, graphically what we're talking about. But let's say what we call, we have, what was that movie? Uh, I don't know, was it Mimi? You know, it had the little Mimi, you know, Mimi syndrome. A high D, low I, or excuse me, low S can be literally the proverbial bull in the china shop. Let me, let me go to a better graph. And this talks about, you know, how a person uh, reacts or responds to certain situations. A high D, you know, someone who's very strong in, in uh, solving problems, and then a low S are probably more, uh, not the word disorganized, but more spontaneous and will tend to break rules. And, and if you add a low C on top of it, then you do have a proverbial bull in the china shop. And but again, when we talk about you know what was the P that we talk about S's was what pace. The higher the S, the more slower appear. You know, if me being a high D, I used to think someone who had a slow reaction or slow response was just disorganized. But that's totally untrue because a high S, high C, in their mind they are so conscientious about getting the job done right and proper and processed and correct and being analytical, that sort of slows down their response. While the high Ds, you know, we just want to do something and we'll start all these projects and have difficulty finishing them. But these folks over here who are totally S's and C's are polar opposites to the DIs are more are more concerned about the quality. So they're thinking, I want to slow down, be careful, be analytical, be uh, accurate. And and DIs will interpret them as being slow. Does that, does that make sense? So again, the higher S, the higher C, the more slow and responsive. The lower S, C they are, the more reactive they are in certain situations. And we, you know, we've done studies that the people who are high D's and low S's are more prone to have traffic accidents because they're not as careful and as cautious as someone who is a high high SC. So let's review. Four P's. What's the P for C's? Procedures. Procedures. What is it for the eyes? People. People. What is it for the S's? Pace. Pace. What is it for the D's? Problem. Problem. Solving problems. Each one of these four people has strengths and limitations. In chapters four and five, and we'll return to that uh, later today or, or the next class, you'll see pages of information and it's listed sequentially beginning with the D's and it will give you limitations and strengths that each of these behavioral styles uh, bring to the plate. So let's um, talk about some of these specifics and famous people that go with the high D's. Here's some famous personalities that are stereotypical high D's and that's just mean one color above the midline as a D. Donald Trump, does he does he act and look like a high D? Oh yeah. <laughs> what are some of his characteristics? You're fired. <laughs> and and sometimes that's what a high D low I will be like. Um, let's talk about Rush Limbaugh. Jesse Ventura. Uh, Fidel Castro, Hillary Clinton. Now, when we talk about how in relationships opposites seem to attract, now let me ask you, and I'm not here trying to be political. You know, I'm not here picking sides or anything. Who do you think is the most, who is warmer and more gregarious, Hillary or Bill Clinton? Bill. <laughs> All right. Good. Let's talk about the characteristics of the Ds. 
focus, problems, and challenges. You know, a D needs to control, direct, challenge, win. What they're motivated by is achieving things. And the point also when you do workshops, this is a very important aspect of your workshop you need to include is talking about what motivates the various four behavioral styles. Now I have a good friend, another good friend of mine who is an attorney and he gave me permission to use his picture. And he's a prosecuting attorney. And his name's Gary. And Gary Gary and I, we've known each other for ten years. And you go into his office on his wall, he has every diploma and certificate, merit badge, Army award he has had since he was a teenager hanging on the wall. And to me it's sort of comical because it's so stereotypical of a, of a high D. Because what motivates a D and what makes a D motivated is achieving a goal and achieving a, a level of ego, and I'm not using the word negatively, but egocentricity, that it's about me, that I'm achieving these things. And sometimes a weakness of a D is they'll go so fast that they'll leave everybody else behind them because they're motivated to win, and they're very competitive people. And so, you know, high Ds, you know, don't like reading long, mushy, chicken soup for the story, you know, sto uh, soul stories. They want everything abbreviated to the point. When you walk into a D's office, you don't, you don't come in and start chit-chatting about personal stuff. You just get straight to the point, plead your case, and you're either going to be innocent or guilty at the end of that conversation. And so when you manage a D, you've got to make sure they stay on task and not start so many programs that they can't finish anything. And when you talk about doing a workshop, one of the one of the things I'll talk more about it on the third class is sometimes I will break all four behavioral styles and put them in four separate corners of the room. And then I give them their disk report and I come ha, pick a a group uh, you know discussion leader and I have them come up with a list and consensus what motivates you as a high D, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and every time a high D's will say, leave us alone, just give us the mission or vision and get the heck out of our way. That's what motivates us. Don't micromanage us. So you see, when you talk about high D's, you see a lot of status symbols because of their egocentricity. And their value they bring to the job or their job demands are, are listed in this slide. If it isn't challenging, if it isn't, uh, you know, a big goal, most likely they won't be motivated to achieve it. So, how many of you know high Ds? Absolutely. <laughs> now. Um, Anybody have an antidote or have a have someone that's a high D that's sort of stereotypical as I described here? I can think of well, one Greg, fellow I, I, I worked will... with that I thought was a high D. Okay. And um, what I remember about him is that uh, when I would come in to meet with him on a, to work on a project that we were jointly trying to accomplish. I would say, good morning, Brian. How are you? And he'd say, good, let's go. <laughs> he needs an executive coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. And the problem with a lot of high D, low S's, and I've worked with, I worked with a president, another president of an interior design company, and she was a genius creatively, if, if, I, if that's a proper word, uh, and she was, you know, founded the company, her husband was the vice president, and she would come to work, she would come in the, the front door so intense with her to, that daily to-do list already done in her mind, and she only had 15 employees, and she was sort of the same way, she couldn't even say hello to people. 
uh, and she would she would in order you know I try to convince her how important it is to make people feel appreciated. She would send them an email and say, "Dear you know, dear Mary, thanks for the good job yesterday. However, you screwed it up in these ways. Da 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 da. Do a better job next time." But she was so intense because of that high D low I style that you know she ended up running off a lot of her good employees because she could have had a hard time just slowing down. So let's talk about the eyes. And we talked about how relationships people uh, opposites attract and and one of you said, well, you know, who's warmer, more gregarious, outgoing? Well obviously it's Bill Clinton. He is a stereotypical high eye. And so are these other people listed here. And again, these are sort of exaggerations that, you know, for the actors, you know, what you see uh, when we look at, at behavioral styles, you're seeing their character more than, you know, really the inner self of that particular actor. But, you know, we're using this just to help you understand those characteristics of the high eye. You know, friendly, you know, outgoing, and these are some of their characteristics and strengths, as well as some of the limitations. Because you have to understand, everybody has strengths and they have limitations. The goal for some high eyes, and I'm not talking about, you know, not everybody's going to be by the book, but their needs is for a high eye. Many times they have this definite need to be liked by other people, and that other people's feelings are important to, to them. You know, I, I doubt if Colin, or Colin Powell, not Colin Powell, but Colin, God, why do I keep repressing his name, the guy from American Idol? I doubt if he really worries, <laughs> thank you, I doubt if he stays up late at night worrying what other people think about him. But for an eye, that could be, in most cases, very important to him. And they they have this natural need to trust other people. So one of the limitations when you read in their in the book, and again, you're going to see an exam question that says, I'm going to give you a graph, and and you're going to have to tell me what their strengths and limitations are when you look at that graph, is sometimes a high eye loses track of time that, you know, the people and the relationships and talking becomes the driving force and sometimes attention to detail and holding people accountable and disciplining other people is very difficult for a high eye. So uh, they have this natural optimism and trust of other people. When we talk about managing change, you know, they're not afraid of change, but you know, sometimes they're going to need a little bit more justification. While the high, high Ds, they love to create change for everybody else. And uh, so that's why they like it, because they don't even follow their own rules. They're good at resolving conflict. Sometimes a high I may be unaware of whatever the cultural rules might be in an organization. Um, you know, this is an exaggeration, doesn't necessarily is true, but, you know, since people and relationships are important, so they may be more concerned about self-improvement. Talking on the phone, long conversations, and if you look at their office, the things hanging on the wall is sometimes it's more team oriented family uh, 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 you know group activities are more important to them so those are again exaggerations of the high eye. Anybody know any high eyes that are close to you like that? Nobody wants to admit it. <laughs> so let's look at the job demands for the high eyes. You know, social interactions, high needs for communication, multitasking, team orientation, freedom from detail and control. <laughs> you know, we talked about right person, right job. If you hire someone who has a very high eye, what job do you think he or she would be good at? Where they need to create something new. 
Mm-hmm. Sales. Sales? Coaching and training. <laughs> Coaching and training. <laughs> <laughs> to a, some degree, I would agree to that. <laughs> What about a recruiter's job with high communication requirements? Would you put a high I in a cubicle by himself where there's no people contact? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's about not, you know, scratching your eyeballs out. No, they got to have contact. So... And I can't tell you how many people have hired people and then stuck them in some high SC job and then wonder why he or she did not perform fair, and then they fire them. Well, whose fault was it in the first place to put that person in a job like that? So that's important to know. Let's talk about my favorite people, the S's. Steady, stable, amiable. And what do you see that are common characteristics of these three people here as relating to their style? Do you see them uh, as high, sure. you know, D people who want to take charge? No, they're the nurturers. No. They're nurturers. Yeah, very calm. Yeah, very calm and soothing. Mm-hmm. What are the what are the two dominant dominant characteristics between Mother Teresa and Mr. Rogers? What what do they have? What's the same with them? With the two of them? Calmness. No, they're dead. No, I'm sorry. Bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm bad. Sorry. But yeah, what you said, the nurturing nature. Serving other people's goals, possibly. In, in some case, you know, Mother Teresa is serving you know a higher calling, a spiritual direction. You see, I, after she died, I, I read a very interesting report, and we talked about the emotions of uh, the the high S's. What was the emotion of the high S? Anybody remember? They don't have any. Well, not well, any, but. They well, they don't show it to you. Not emotional. It's internalized emotion. But the interesting thing about Mother Teresa is she was tormented by guilt and uh, lack of, uh, you know, psych. I would say borderline psychiatric issues because, you know, she did not feel worthy. And it, it just tormented her whole life, and it went into all the letters she wrote to the Pope. And, you know, it, and, you know certainly a person like that is emotional, but again, the point is, is they do not show it unless you really either force their back against the wall or you really know them, you know, very well. So let's talk about some of the characteristics. Let me go back here. Characteristics of the, of the high S's. They have this need to serve others. And when you're putting it to end, the other thing when you do a workshop, we have this little exercise called the the building the tallest tower, which sort of it demonstrates to teams how how these behaviors interact in either a, a favorable or dysfunctional way on this particular exercise, building the tallest tower. And the you know, again, the S's are sort of the glue that holds everything together. And it takes longer for the S's to make change, prepare for change, and you've got to do a, a yeoman's job to convincing them they do need to change. Now, me as a, an OD consultant, you know, I go into big companies, and we talk about changing the entire culture. And what I found is that the people I want to make sure are on my side are the S's because we know they're the ones that are probably looked up to the most by their colleagues. And if we can convince them that change is necessary, it makes the whole transition much more uh, easygoing when we're talking about changing cultures and, and leadership styles and the like. And family, the interesting thing about high S's is the family is sacred is, you know, they have fewer, I would say, 
compared, the eyes have fewer friends, but they're much closer to those fr those fewer friends and much closer to the family than, say, the other behavioral styles. And again, 40% of the population is is the S's. And their job demands, you know, what gives these people ulcers is a lot is people who are changing the rules all the time, or changing. Uh, way processes need to be performed. They want things in writing. They want, uh, you know, the interesting. You know, I hired a, a lady that works for me, Jan. I don't know if you've talked to Jan. There's Jan and Kathy, and Jan is, uh, uh, you know, a hundred percent S. And me being a high D, I just wish everybody could read my mind, and I didn't have to write things down for people to figure out because I change everything all the time and change the dates and classes and stuff on the website and I just drive everybody crazy sometimes. But with Jan, she keeps she's my, you know, office, you know, yin and yang. She's the one that keeps me organized and ensure that I'm, you know, heading in the direction I'm supposed to be heading. But she likes everything written down and she loves details and she wants to know all the minute details about everything relating to the business. And sometimes for me as a high D, I just, you know, it's hard for me to sit still and explain it to somebody. But if you have them, if you understand what motivates them and they need for their job, you know, you can't live without them. And Let's talk about the C's because a lot of people feel, uh, since the C is the last of the four behavioral styles, we don't give them the credit they deserve. The world would stop if it wasn't for the high C's of the world. And these are the, some of the more dominant behavioral styles or personalities, Colin Powell, Al Gore, and we know Al Gore was a genius because he invented the internet. <laughs> Bill Gates, <laughs> Spock, Diane Sawyer, and the, the high C's again is the problem. Many times, and many times, the high C's cause themselves a problem because sometimes when they're threatened or a big bossy high D starts barking orders, they tend to back down. And it's important when you're working with groups of people that you you listen and give these people the right environment to tell people what they really know because a lot of them are true geniuses. But many times they feel uncomfortable speaking in public or bringing up important facts that if we did not know, we would, you know, commit yeah, a, a, you know, a m big mistake. And interesting. Have you ever had a meeting, a public meeting with you know your work team or your client or with your colleagues? And when you ask people, you know, what are your, you know, say you you have a meeting, sort of like I'm talking to you, and you stop and you ask your team, you know, can I have your comments or what do you think? Who do you normally hear from? In meetings, the D's, D's I's, I's, S's, or C's. The D's and I's. I's. Yeah, and we all know they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but what? But you know, you know, it's people like me. You know, my my favorite pastime is creating conflict for other people. But many times, because the, the S's and C's they don't feel comfortable just blurting out their thoughts because remember what are they doing they want to be accurate they want to be detailed and they want to feel safe to bring up their ideas so what you may have to do is say hey well think about it and then you know send me a written notice or an email or something tell me what you think and then you may get some input from them that you would not get in a public forum such as a as a meeting and I can't, you know, me being a high D can't tell you how many times I messed up because I did not listen to the S's and C's. Yeah. And that is critical. And many times when you do workshops, you want to make sure that you capitalize on their knowledge uh, and don't make them feel like their input is not valuable. So that's... 
important to keep in the back of your mind. Okay. And these are the job demands for for the C. And we need to make sure that we understand what those standards are and they have adequate time to perform their job. And, um, you know, if, there, if anyone's going to be resist you when it comes to change, you know, it's going to be the S's and C's. So let me ask you this question. Which style of the four we just talked about is the best? I heard a lot of noise. I didn't. I don't so, think any of them are the best. They're not? I thought the high D's were the best of the world. Well, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> now, who says I was egocentric? <laughs> no. They're all the best and they're all the worst. Oh, I love that answer. I'll put that in my next book. You know, you know, every time I'm messed up being a high D, I just tell people I can't help it. It's a genetic flaw. The uh, So Nick, what I have here is four descriptions of one for each of the four behavioral styles. I want you to read these descriptions and tell me who is this person. Is that an S? Nope. And it will be a C. I think it's a C. Yeah, it, it is a C. Now let me give you some the giveaways because I'm doing this because you're going to see some of these common characteristics throughout this course and throughout your life when you're involved with with uh, assessments is remember what I said about the C sometimes uh, step down when challenged so they will tend to give in now I uh, I'm a very fortunate person I have uh, Two, old, two daughters who are both happily married to, to, to engineers who actually have a good job and I don't have to support them anymore so that makes me feel very good. One, one of my son-in-laws is a, is a software engineer with a major IT company here in the US and last year my wife and I and he and my daughter we went to a trip to Ireland now my wife doesn't let me drive because I'll get lost and I'll crash the little car and all those little roads around Ireland so she drives so my job was basically to be the financial supporter of this operation and my son who's a very high C engineer his job was to be the navigator and and my daughter, who has a behavioral style similar to mine, we, we tend to step all over him because we change our minds a lot and say, well, instead of going here today, we want to go there. And he just tended to back down. And I'm trying to tell him, Glenn, you need to step up and just tell these high Ds to shut up. And we'll just follow the plan we had set up, we agreed to. So anyway, the high Cs prefer to listen and analyze. So that's a characteristic of the C. Let's look at the next one. That's an I. That's a high I. That's an I. Yeah. It's an I. So um, what do you see that's the obvious that makes this person an I? What, what tells you that this is an I? Maybe make some decisions without gathering all the facts necessary. <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> okay. What else? 
optimistic. Very trustworthy. Trustworthy. Like talking to people. Okay. All types of people. Guy, you, this class is so much smarter than all my classes. You learn quick. How about this one? <laughs> An S. A what? Pardon? An S. An S? Yes. Okay. Anybody else want to take a guess? I think it's a C. I think it's a Okay, here's here's a D. A D. Uh huh. Well, that's a good guess, but it's incorrect. It it is an S. So it has it has the classics of a C. It oh it, how come? Because it says right there is a warrior. Well, S's and C, high S's and C's are both warriors. It could is probably someone who's a high S with some mid level C. And here here's what we look for. Team player is more of an S than a C. Um it, you know, the thorough researcher could be either or an S or C. Um Premium on friendship, sometimes to a fault, is is definitely a high S tendency. Uh, warmly in small groups <clears throat> is an S. You know, worrier, you could go either way. Um, family is sacred is the definitely the the giveaway for the high S. Not to say high C's aren't don't have a family that's sacred. Um, in a shortcoming, inability to act quickly to change an unexpected turn of events. That could be either S or C. And so the last one should be easy, right? Who's this? D. D. Mm -hmm. D. That's the D. <clears throat> yeah, that one's easy, right? Um, well informed on many subjects. Well, that could be true or untrue. It just depends. As as uh, Mark Twain said, we're all ignorant, but just on different subjects. So, <laughs> anyway, we're just about out of time and at a good stopping point. And I just want to see if you have any questions. But before I do that, I want to review your homework assignment. You should have watched the first two videos uh, for, for today's class. And again, chapters, if you have not read chapters one through four, you need to read them. And you need to, you know, chapter, we're really going to go into chapter five on the next class and video three and four. Now let me just tell you about your your hardback, the Universal Language Disc Book. When we look at chapters four and five, you're not going to remember it with one reading. And I would, and I still read my book from time to time because you continuously need a refresher. So don't. To feel bad unless you have you know if you have a photographic memory well you know bless your heart that's great but most of us don't it's going to require you to go back and forth from time to time to reread chapters four and five four and five are the most critical two chapters in the entire book so before we say saranara does anybody have any questions I do this I is do. Michelle Go ahead, Michelle. So, who wants to go first? Go okay. Ahead, so, I'm just real. Qu okay, real quickly. Are there any theories that, under pressure or high stress, that you would flip um, letters? Yeah, we're going to cover that on the next class. But the the uh, the textbook and the research shows, and we're talking about on your graph and. And we'll go into that in the next class, for example, 
this is Karen's, is there are two graphs here. Your natural style, which is the way you are at home, and your adapted style is the way you adapt to the work environment. And this style will, on your natural style, the way you are at home, will, I mean, you can take the report tomorrow and there may be a 10% variation in these graphs. But if you're a core ID, as Karen is, you will be a pretty much a core I your entire life unless there's a significant emotional event in your life. This, the adapted style, will change depending on the environment. And your environment changes all the time. You know, someone announces layoffs or we're going to cut back your benefits, this graph will change based on the environmental influences you're experiencing, you know, in your adapted style, in your work environment. So this doesn't change that much. This changes all the time. Other questions? Yes, I had a question. This is Kima. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering because I have met um, some C's that did have the, the fear and not talking up um, characteristics, things like that. However, the majority of C's that I have come across, they're completely analytical, but to the point where they know that they're right and they're not bendable. So do they have like D characteristics as well, or would you, that would not be a high C? How, how would you? No, <clears throat> I think someone who's inflexible mm -hmm. isn't necessarily anybody who is, has a high or low D. Uh, okay. the, and that's why the second report is very valuable in having, because that mm -hmm. shows that possibly this person and that tendency you described is what we would find in a high theoretical or high traditional um, motivational style. High theoretical is, is your typical academic who has so much information they have no common sense but just love to research. A high, mm -hmm. tra high traditional person has a set of values in their life that are very finite and in some cases unbreakable. So mm -hmm. I would and, and so I would have to see that second report on you know that person to really tell you, but you know the D doesn't have anything to do with uh, uh, you know D has a lot to do with stubbornness, but also right. so also a high C can be very stubborn. So yeah, it the question I'm is confused. it all depends, or the answer is all depends. Right. I guess I'm getting confused with um, the fear factor with the C um, because it, it would seem as if, and maybe I'm going the wrong direction here, but it would seem as if uh, because they do have all of the facts and they check and recheck and all of this kind of stuff many times, um, yeah. if they, if, yeah, and, okay. and with just, and with just, this, this uh, I can't speak, <laughs> With this, if you remember, we had the slide about emotional intelligence. Yeah. There, no, you don't need to see Facebook. Wrong one. When we go, <laughs> when we talked about emotional intelligence, pretend you have a, a an onion in your hand. Okay. Okay. With the disc assessment you remove 30% of the layers of that onion. And remember, the DISC assessment is only showing you how this person behaves, the, the external tone of voice, body language, and how they interrelate to people. That's all the DISC assessment shows you. It's not, okay. a, cl it's not a clinical assessment. And, and then when you take, go to the second assessment, that takes another 60% of the layer of the onion that shows what motivates this person. Are they driven to be a researcher, an analytical person, or are their values so rigid that they only think, you know, Buddha is the only you know religious person in the world? I'm just right. pulling that out of thin air. 
so and then the third report that border and again this this personal talent skills indicator mm -hmm. could if we included certain information be a clinical assessment on someone it takes the person all the way down 90 percent of information this report will show if this person really has some significant emotional issues or low self-concept or they're just lost in the desert because they don't see their life going anywhere. This is the report that would show if this person really has some major issues that affect his or her performance. And, okay. and so I would, you know, if I was playing psychiatrist, I would not, I would do all three reports before I could really tell you if they have a serious problem or they're just stubborn boneheads like me. <laughs> no problem. Okay. All right. Thank you. You know, this report will also tell you if they carry an M16 in their car. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Well, if not, we'll meet up again at Wednesday at 3.30. And um, I enjoyed it, and hopefully you didn't get tired of listening to me for 90 minutes. So we'll pick up uh, next win or this Wednesday. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, you too. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.